Dozens of people are estimated to have been killed in clashes between police and indigenous activists protesting oil and mining projects in the northern Peruvian Amazonian province of Bagua. Peruvian authorities have declared a military curfew. Troops are patrolling towns in the Amazon jungle. Authorities say up to 22 policemen have been killed and two remain missing. The indigenous community says at least 40 people, including three children, were killed by the police this weekend. On Friday morning, some 600 Peruvian riot police and helicopters attacked a peaceful indigenous blockade outside of Bagua, killing 25 and injuring more than 150. Eyewitness accounts indicate the police fired live ammunition and tear gas into the crowd. The images our TV viewers are watching are from an on-the-ground eyewitness to the attack. Our radio listeners can see these images at our website, democracynow.org. Alberto Pizango, the leader of the National Indigenous Organization, the Peruvian Jungle Interethnic Development Association, or EDISEP, accused the government of President Alain Garcia of ordering the, quote, genocide of the indigenous communities. Los hermanos están acorralados ahí. Yo quiero... Our brothers are cornered. I want to put the responsibility on the government. We are going to put the responsibility on Alan Garcia's government. For ordering this genocide. This is genocide. Pizango is now in hiding after a judge ordered his arrest Saturday on charges of sedition and for allegedly inciting violence. Authorities say following Friday's attack on the indigenous protesters, dozens of policemen were held hostage and several murdered. An injured policeman, Fredegundo Vasquez, said he saw indigenous activists torturing and killing policemen with their spears. Ahí empezaron a matar a la gente. Yo he visto. I saw them kill people right in front of me, and they began to hit the rest of us with spears. It's disgraceful. They are just terrible. They said that their brothers died, so we had to die too. On Sunday, Peruvian President Alain Garcia defended the police actions and lashed out against the deaths of the policemen. He blamed, quote, foreign forces for the violence and spoke of a, quote, conspiracy to stop his government from exploiting natural resources. These death mongers would like the world to denounce hundreds of natives being killed. But what has been found are dozens of police with their throats slit. That's the truth when one talks of the facts of these deaths. Uno ve la de las and you might ask why there are our police deaths, if they are the ones who are armed. The explanation for all of this, you come to understand, is a will for dialogue on the part of these humble policemen who had no desire to fire their weapons. Que no han querido disparar. Peruvian President Alain Garcia defending the police actions against indigenous protesters last week. Over the weekend, Garcia, a free trade advocate, said 40,000 natives did not have the right to tell 28 million Peruvians not to come to their lands. Anyone who did so, he warned, would lead Peru into, quote, irrationality and a backwards primitive state. Since April, indigenous groups have opposed new laws that would allow an unprecedented wave of logging, oil drilling, mining, and agriculture in the Amazon rainforest by blocking roads, waterways, and oil pipelines. President Garcia's government passed these laws under fast-track authority he'd received from the Peruvian Congress to facilitate implementation of the U.S.-Peru Free Trade Agreement. Friday's clashes followed a governmental decision to reject congressional attempts to overturn some of the laws. Independent journalist Henry Pilaris interviewed indigenous leader Alberto Pizango last month for the group Amazon Watch. They've said that we indigenous peoples are against the system, but no, we want development. But from our perspective, development that adheres to legal conventions such as the United Nations International Labor Organization's Convention 169 that says we, the indigenous peoples, have to be consulted. The government has not consulted us. Not only am I being persecuted, but I feel that my life is in danger because I am defending the rights of the peoples, the legitimate rights that the indigenous people have.
I feel I am being persecuted, and the situation can get much worse with my criminal prosecution. For the latest news from the Peruvian jungle, I'm joined now by Democracy Now! video stream from Bagua, Peru, by Gregor McLennan. Uh, he is with the group Amazon Watch. He arrived in Bagua, the scene of this weekend's clash is Saturday. Gregor McLennan, welcome to Democracy Now! Tell us what you understand has happened up until this point. Uh, well, the, um, there have been 50, uh, for 56 days, uh, about 2,500 indigenous people have been blockading the road between the town of Jaén and Bauer on a curve called uh, uh, the Devil's Curve. Um, it appeared that uh, in the few, few days running up to the clashes, the government was um, beginning to uh, get fed up with waiting and get fed up with the fact that uh, uh, the indigenous people were not moving on just the basis of dialogue. And refusing, the government was refusing to repeal any of the laws. Uh, the day before the protests, the, the clashes, the, um, the local police chief and the local mayors and the indigenous leaders all had a meeting where the police chief said he had orders to bring order and to open up the road if the indigenous people didn't move. What happened that night was um, the police, about 500 police, approached the protesters, and at 5:30 in the morning, they started firing tear gas and then live bullets into the crowd of indigenous people on the road um, who were waking up um, and, and some still sleeping at that, that time in the morning. What resulted was, seems to be, appears to be a, a total massacre. Um, I was speaking to a local leader who talked uh, about how uh, they had got down on their knees and held their hands up and the police had fired straight into their bodies as they asked for them not to shoot. Um, what followed then was a, seems to be a series of running battles along the road as the indigenous people tried to flee into the hills and flee back to the town of Bawa Chica uh, as the police continued to fire tear gas from helicopters and from the ground and fire live bullets from the helicopters and from the ground. Uh, and people talk about how they're aiming at their bodies and shooting to kill. I've just been listening to some audio reports of it, hearing, hearing the police shouting, yeah, shoot them in the head, shoot the, shoot the dogs in the head. As they, as they ran, ran for cover. Um, it does seem um, there have also been, unfortunate uh, reports of police deaths. All the indigenous people I've spoken to are very upset about that equally, as they say, you know, they, they're, all, they're all Peruvians and they all have families. Um, uh, it appears that uh, as the police were attacking this huge group of indigenous people on the corner of the road, some people came down from the mountains who were sleeping up there and jumped on the police and killed some of the police. Uh, in self-defense. Um, an act that's understandable, but as the leaders I've spoken to say, it's not excusable. And that what they're asking for is, is justice and transparency about exactly what happened, um, and for those who are responsible for getting to be brought to justice. Gregor McLennan is speaking to us again in Bagua, um, where the massacre took place. Can you explain why people were protesting there this weekend? People have been protesting against a government and government policy that, that ignores indigenous peoples, that sees the Amazon as being unproductive uh, and sees indigenous people as essentially a waste of space. Uh, what the government wants to do is open up the, uh, the Amazon to private investment. They see the future of development there to be uh, biofuel plantations, oil drilling, mining, um, forestry, uh, and uh, large corporate investments, and indigenous people are just getting in the way. So what the government did uh, when it was given powers in the context of the free trade agreement was issue a series of laws um, that never went through Congress, that were never consulted with indigenous people, that basically restructure land rights, take away land from indigenous people, uh, and allow land rainforests to be reclassified as agricultural land, basically opening legal loopholes for biofuel companies to move in uh, with plantations, for oil companies and mining companies to be able to work uh, in the area without the troublesome uh, part of having to negotiate or speak to the local communities before using their lands. Gregor McLennan, uh, can you